Hi, everybody. Welcome to the February 23rd, 2018 edition of the Colorado Inside Out Post Game, a special web exclusive production here on Channel 12. I'm your host, Dominic Dizzuti. Let's get to it. Let's get a quick take on the latest updates in the 2018 gubernatorial race, including Democratic candidate Mike Johnson turning in his signatures this week. Patty Calhoun from Westward, uh, there's a lot to choose from at Michael Johnson point, but the governor's race continues to be compelling. We, we were licking our chops last year over a really big, messy primary in both parties, but Usually we get teased, but it all falls apart and some, a couple rise to the top. So far, we still have some pretty messy primaries coming our way. Yes, they're going to be slightly less messy and less fun because Tom Tancredo dropped out. Very but true. it still is almost anyone's game. Mike Johnston started running first, but he didn't have, so he's got a good ground game in place. He managed to turn in the petitions, collect all those signatures without spending any extra money using his grassroots operatives. So that's a good sign for him, but still, is he does... Does he have enough power to pull ahead of Polis, who seems to be the heir apparent? You still have Kerry Kennedy and um, Donna Lynn pushing. You've got Noel Ginsburg. You've got really interesting candidates on both the Democratic and Republican side. So is anyone really going to catch fire, or is it just going to be a money game at this point? David Copel from the Independence Institute and DU Law School. Conventional wisdom has really been turned on its ear these last couple election cycles. Uh, Tim Neville was supposed to be coronated uh, last year as a, or two years ago as a Senate candidate, and Daryl Glenn came out of nowhere and grabbed it. So a primary that looks like here's the front runner can be upset in one way. But how do you think it's going to go from what we've learned so far? Where's the momentum? I wouldn't make a prediction on that. And um our 25th anniversary show, Peter was trying to goad me into, into making a prediction. I said, no, it's, I, I don't know. It, it's, I, I agree, it is, it is very wide open. One of the interesting things to see will be on, on the Democratic side, all of Colorado's Democratic gubernatorial candidates who have won, going back to Dick Lamb in 1974, have been, in one way or the other, somewhat open-minded about some educational reforms. Of course, it was Governor Romer who signed Colorado's charter school law. And we have lot, lots and lots of other examples of that. And, and certainly Mike Johnston and, and Jared Polis are both definitely in that tradition. And Kerry Kennedy is, is absolutely the opposite. Uh, from my point of view, I would say she is, she's, the, she's the candidate of the union, which wants the schools run for the benefit of the union. Uh, and when, to the extent there's a conflict between quality education, say getting rid of incompetent teachers, things like that, uh, the union comes down on the side of union interest and not of, of student and family interest. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that shakes out in the Democratic primary, if the union can take back what it views as rightfully its, which is uh, the control of all Democratic candidates. <laughs> Penfield Tate, uh, attorney with QTAC Rock, also a longtime state lawmaker. You've been involved in Colorado politics for a long time. You've seen these shake out and go crazy ways and according to Hoyle. I'm not asking you to uh, predict any nominees, but where, where do you see the momentum? What, what has been surprising or at least enlightening to you from what we see right now the end of February? What is most surprising to me is I'm not convinced you can say any one candidate has the momentum right now. I, I, I mean, Tom Tancredo dropping out certainly helped Walker Stapleton and, you know, everybody's whispering that Tom got forced out, which I refuse to believe that anybody could force Tom, <laughs> Tom, Tom Tancredo to drop out of an election to clear the way for Walker Stapleton, of all people. But uh, I still think Cynthia Kaufman going through the state assembly and, and convention process um, has an interesting opportunity there. Uh, and, and I think with all of the At Me Too movement going on, that that may play for Cynthia, particularly on the Republican side of the aisle. And my guess is Walker is mindful of that. I, I think that his campaign approach has been interesting in terms of not speaking with the press or talking with others, but that's the dynamic on that side of the aisle. On the Democratic side of the aisle, it's interesting. I, you know, everybody's afraid of Jared Polis because he's got unlimited resources, except a lot of folks in the party don't want him to be the nominee because they don't think he can win statewide. Then you work through the rest of the group. Mike Johnston is too close to being a voucher proponent for a number of Democrats. So they're not wild about him. Carrie Kennedy, a lot of people say she lost to Walker Stapleton once before, and if he's the nominee, how is she going to win another statewide race against Walker Stapleton? Which leaves you Donna Lynn and, and Noel Ginsburg. Um, and it's, it's, it's just up in the air at this point. It's too early to say Mike's turned his, in his petitions early. Well, that's great. 
If everybody else turns in theirs and everybody has enough signatures to qualify for the ballot, being first in doesn't necessarily get you anything. Michael Fields from Americans for Prosperity rounds out the panel. Usually Republicans in Colorado have the uh, uh, the curious habit of a circular firing squad in the primary, make it as bloody as possible, and they limp into the general election, whereas the Democrats usually have some sort of meeting, come out with a nominee, at least are stronger. This time we have two really messy primaries, at the very least at the end of February. I know a lot of things can happen between now and June 26th. From what we've seen so far, is there momentum, is there headlines, what do you take away from what we've seen? Yeah, I don't mind making a prediction of nominees at this point. I think it's going to be Jared Polis and Walker Stapleton. Um, Jared Polis not only has a lot of money, but he also has a double-digit lead in the only poll that we saw that was public. Um, and so it's hard to catch somebody that, that has the name recognition and that money. Uh, Walker Stapleton, I think he benefits from Tom Tancredo dropping out and, and George Brockler dropping out. Um, I was a lot more excited when we were going to have a Brockler-Walker matchup and a Perlmutter, you know, Polis matchup. Um, and so I think while there's not a ton of momentum going on, I think those are the front runners. Um, and it's going to be hard for anybody else to knock them off without some kind of big moment in a debate or a big moment, you know, media-wise in order to overcome the money advantage that those two candidates have. It seems funny at this point that the biggest headlines from the governor's race are the people who have dropped out on both sides. Is that something curious about that? That's all the time we have for CIO Post Game this week. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. For everyone here at CPT12.org, I'm Dominic Dizzuti. Thanks for watching.